boundary is out, covers each side of the hot stream. And there's always at least a 10 degree minimum approach temperature difference. This is useful, but it, you don't have to do it because you, you don't have to, but it's useful. Um, you don't need it to solve a problem is what I mean. Now you can do number seven, finding the minimum number of heat exchangers around the pinch. Um, each arrow represents a heat exchanger. Um, the total number of arrows is the total number of heat exchangers, but not necessarily the correct stream matches. The numbers in the boxes are the energy in the streams. Numbers with arrows are energy transferred in the heat exchanger. So above the pinch, we're going to need three heat exchangers, and below it, we're going to need four to handle all the heat transfer. Um, this is representing the heat available in each stream and available from the utilities above and below the pinch. The minimum number of heat exchangers is determined, um, I'm sorry, the correct number of heat exchangers is what I meant to say is the number of process streams plus the number of utility streams minus one. Now, you can design the network. Um, keep in mind above the pinch, your MCP must be less in the hot region than it is in the cold for the cold stream. And below the pinch is the opposite. Um, the hot stream MCP must be better, uh, bigger than the cold stream um, MCP. Oy. Um, there may not be unique streams this will make sense once you see the actual design for the network. The design starts from the pinch and works away. Um, above the pinch, you can only match streams if that criteria is met. So starting out designing above the pinch, we're matching the MCP of the hot stream less than that of the cold stream. And we continue on to match our cues like this. You can see the um, stream numbers matching at the top. One and three, two and five, three and three, and four and two. Adding the second cue. Remember the table. I'm going to go back and show you. I'm, I'm pointing at the <laughs> screen in front of me. You have five intervals, two temperatures, and two cues for each interval. So here's the design. Continuing down. And it keeps going. This is below the pinch. Sorry, I didn't realize it was already on the slide. Um, this is the opposite, of course, with the hot stream MCP being greater than that of the cold stream. Um, below the pinch, you don't have to, um, you can match any streams as long as the temperatures are valid, if that makes any sense. Um, if the criterion at the pinch seems impossible to satisfy, you can split streams to satisfy the criteria that you set for that area. Um, above the pinch, oh, this is confusing and very hard to explain. <laughs> You're doing good. Okay. Um, You match streams, you add heat exchangers to keep all of your criteria straight above and below the pinch. Below the pinch is less picky compared to above the pinch. Um, below you can split streams if you need to. Above the pinch you can't really do that. The pinch is that one place where mass and energy requirements are small so that it constrains your equipment. So, 
And there's more than one design above and below. It's not just here's the one answer. There are several alternates that you can find for every design, usually. Your overall network above and below the pinch should look like this when you're done. I would suggest working a problem out of the book to help you understand it better. <laughs> um, in summary, you use heat exchange networks to approach designing around a pinch. Use minimum number of utilities to find the economic optimums. It may not necessarily be the economic optimum when you first do it, but it gives you a good starting point. The Mumney method is straightforward when you're following all the steps in the book. It makes a lot more sense when you can actually write stuff down and, and do your own calculations. Um, but you have to be careful when you're matching streams at the pinch. Of course, there are different correct answers and many possibilities, and that is all that I have to say about pinch. <laughs>